Okay, now we're going to look at counting techniques. Counting techniques are very useful tools in determining probabilities, especially when we make use of the classical definition of probability. If you think of the experiment where we throw a single die, then our sample space S is given by 1 to 6. If we define an event A to get an even number, then A is given by 2, 4 or 6. And we can find the probability of A by counting the number of events in the set for A, so that's 3, over the number of equally likely simple events in S, which is 6. So the answer is 3 over 6 or 0.5. Now this is quite easy. But what if we have three dice and we want to find the sample space when we um, perform this experiment? Then our sample space will be the following. The first outcome, possible outcome, will be a one on the first die, a one on the second one, a one on the third one. And then a one on the first one, one on the second one, and a two on the third one. One, one, three. And we can continue in this way up to the point where we have a six on the first one, on the second one and a six on the last one. And now it's very tedious to write out all the possibilities and then count them to know the number of equally likely um, simple events in S. So we need some tools to help us to do the counting. Now let's look at this example here. Suppose you have a combination lock with four digits. How many possible combinations are there for this lock? Now we can choose any one from 0, 1, 2, 3. So we have a choice of 10. In the first position, we have a choice of 10. In the second position, we have a choice of 10. The third and the fourth position. So the total number of possible combinations for this lock is 10 to the power 4 or 10,000. Okay, so that brings us to the basic counting rule. If the first step in a k-step experiment can be carried out in m1 ways, the second step in m2 ways, up until the kth step in mk ways, then the whole experiment can be carried out in m1 times m2 up until mk ways. Now the example that we looked at in the combination lock, we had four steps. And the possible choices in each of those steps were the same. We had a choice of 10. But that need not be the case. Suppose we have a simple test with five questions. And the first three questions are multiple choice. So we can choose from A, B, C, D and E. And the last two questions are true, false questions. So we have five steps. Question 1, 2, 3 up until question 5. The first question we have a choice of 5. For the second question, multiple choice, we have a choice of 5. The same for the third one. Then question 4 we have true false, so we have a choice only of 2. And the same for question 5 we have a choice of 2. Okay, so if we answer this um, small test of 5 questions in a random way how many possible ways are there to answer this test and that answer is equal to 500. So now we can ask the question if we answer this small test randomly what is our chances to get full marks and that probability to get full marks if we answer it randomly is 1 over 500 so not a very big chance. Okay, next, let's look at this example. I have five students, five individuals, so they are distinguishable. And I want to know in how many ways can these five students stand in a line. So you can see that we have three possibilities here. And of course, there are uh, many more possibilities. In how many ways can we arrange these five students? We can think of it in the following way. I've got my five positions. 
For the first position, I can choose any one of the five students. Then in the second position, I can choose any one of the four remaining students. In the third position, I have three students to choose from. In the fourth position, I have only two students left. And in the last position, there's only one student left. Okay, so this is then permutations. There are n factorial possible arrangements of n distinct objects. Just see the note here that n exclamation is pronounced as n factorial. And then by definition, 0 factorial is equal to 1. So to answer our original question of the five students, they can be ordered in five permutation different ways. So that is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and that is equal to 120. Okay, now next we can say that from my group of five students, I want to select a sample of three students. How many of these samples are possible? Okay, so here we have two samples of three different students. Um, and of course, again, there are many samples of size three possible from my group of um, five students. If you look at this first sample here, let's call it S1. Let's call these three students, let's call them Anne, Adam and Adele. On this slide, I have the same three students um, and I've selected them in different orders. But because it's the same three students, we will consider this as a single sample. So now the question is, in how many ways can I select samples of size 3 from my group of 5 distinct students? And that is combinations. They are n combination r, different combinations of size r from n distinct objects. So for our example, it will be 5 combination 3. We can also write it as 5 combination 3. 3. And that is by definition n factorial, in our case 5, n minus r factorial, so that will be 5 minus 3 factorial, times r factorial, so that is then 3 factorial. Okay, we know that 5 factorial, we already calculated that previously, 5 factorial is equal to 120. 5 minus 3 is 2, so 2 factorial is just 2, 2 times 1, so that's 2. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, so that is 6. And this answer then is equal to 10. So 10 different samples of size 3 that can be selected from my group of 5 students. Now again, from my group of five students, I want to select three students and give them three prizes that differ in value. In how many ways can this be done? Now if we look at the three students in our um, first sample, Anne, Adam and Adele, if I give the first prize to Anne, the second prize to Adam and the third prize to Adele, then that would be different than to give the first prize to Adam, the second prize to Adele and the third prize to Anne. So we will call this six different permutations. Although it's the same three students, so we consider these students as one sample, but if the order of these three students are important, we will call them um, permutations and they are six different permutations of the same three students. And that then brings us to n permutation r. There are n permutation r, different permutations of size r from n distinct objects. So for our example, that would be 5 permutation 3, which is 5 factorial over 5 minus 3, 
factorial. Now 5 factorial is 120. 5 minus 3 is 2 factorial. is 2 times 1, which is just 2. And that is equal to 60. So 60 possible permutations of size 3 from a total of 5 distinct objects. In conclusion, just a few notes on factorials. 0 factorial is 1, like we said before. Then in combination 0 is 1. If we write it out in combination 0, by definition that is n factorial over n minus 0 factorial, 0 factorial, that is n fac factorial over n minus 0 factorial is n factorial and 0 factorial is 1. And that just simplifies to 1. Then the third note there, n combination r is the same as n combination n minus r. And if you write it out, you will see that to be true. Okay, most calculators has a function for n factorial. However, however, when this n increases, this n factorial increases rapidly. So then it's best to simplify expressions of factorials for large numbers. For example, if we have 40 combination 5, we write it by definition as 40 factorial over 35 factorial, 5 factorial. Now 40 factorial can be written as 40 times 39 times 38, 37, 36 times 35 factorial. And then below the line 35 factorial times 5 factorial. And then these two 35 factorials cancel out. So we have 40 times 39 up until 36 divided by 5 factorial. And that will give us our answer.